Okay, yeah. The planks in the middle, front the wheels middle. coming. Oh shit, wheels in the middle of the plane. Yep, got it. So, Paul, who's got the brake? Me. Back? Yep, let's go. Yeah, the last time I saw this bike was in Christchurch. Um, I was involved in the earthquake. I was in the earthquake in Christchurch. I was in the square and heading down to the motorcycle shop where it was on display. And um, when I finally got there an hour and a half after the earthquake had commenced and passed all the rubble, and I got there and found the shop that it was at. And with it lying upside down with 130 other motorcycles all on their side and it was just awful. It's absolutely the most iconic of all the Britons. The first one it always is, of course, you know, and that's the very, very first one. So we Yes. The museum in Christchurch have been talking about putting it in there. But of course, their museum is, is not ready and maybe it won't be ready for a while. And I had to talk to Tom Sturgis, the owner of this collection, and it crossed my mind that, that we would be perfect at a place, you know, a perfect kind of a marriage, that the Britain could be here, knowing that it would be well looked after, it's in a good place, it's in a, in a lovely building and lovely surroundings, and the public can come along and see it. And what I've gathered you here tonight, I want to show you the best motorcycle in the world. <laughs> okay. was me holding little pieces of wire while John was gluing with a glue gun to make the shape of the fairing. It was all made with wire, like, yeah, aluminium wire. And, and uh, this is kind of work at one o'clock in the morning because we all had jobs. There was, you know, there was nobody working for John at that time. And uh, so it was a volunteer effort, of course. And, and uh, people were coming along with their own little areas of expertise. My expertise was holding the bit of wire while he did the gluing. You know. <laughs> oh, John was, you know, John was, John, my John was like the Pied Piper and attracted wonderful people to help create his vision and dream. He couldn't have done it by himself. And, you know, John was, along with many others, instrumental in that being able to happen. So uh, we have wonderful memories of the, the Britain team. Yeah, John was was um, very cheerful, intelligent, convivial guy, you know, a, a good person to meet. If we were talking engineering or talking technical stuff to do with the bike, he wasn't such a person that would say, this is the way I'm going to do it. If you said, oh, maybe, and he would listen, although he did have the plan in his mind of what he did want to do. but it was purchased by, by Gil Simpson from Cardinal Network who, um, who the, the proceeds from that bike helped John to get the funds to be able to build a, a smaller engine bike and one with silencers and one that was more eligible for the, 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 the places it needed to race. 
bike needed to be a thousand cc. It had to be less than a thousand cc, and this bike didn't qualify. And of course, it didn't meet the sound regulations by about three million decibels too much. I saw Bob Bertman Road quite a lot. Uh, I come from Mosgill, down in the deep part of the South Island, just south of Dunedin, and Bert was from Invercargill. So I was riding a lot of speed events that Bert was at and talk in the pits and all that sort of stuff and share the stories. And um, Bert was very secretive about the bike and what, went, what went on inside it and all that. But Bert's, Bert's bikes were, you could say, not that well prepared. And sometimes Bert would have to get the machine inspected by the scrutineers about three times before he let him ride the thing on the road, you know. Some parts of it were held together with cardboard and string and number eight fencing wire stolen on the day from a fence nearby. That kind of thing. I'm exaggerating a bit, but people that know Bert will understand. And John Britton's bike was always immaculately prepared. I can remember at um, Daytona, and uh, they pulled up, the Ducati team pulled into the pits and they had five transporters. And one transporter was just for hospitality, you know, just with wine and grapes and stuff, and cheese. And um, they had another truck with 27 bikes in it and three other trucks of spare parts. And we arrived from New Zealand with a crate and three people and looking and going, wow, what are we doing here? And um, it was a lot of pleasure to go out on the racetrack and actually beat them. Andrew Stroud, the, the normal rider for the Britain, rode this bike in front of the, uh, the funeral cortege of thousands of people on the street in Christchurch. And um, if you can picture or imagine, you know, the noise it made for a start, you know, in, in, in front of the in front of the hearse that came up into the cathedral. When we were, I was sitting in the cathedral at the time, of course, you know, but there were a lot of people outside. But the noise inside the cathedral was tremendous. So the people outside must have got an earful.